Hey guys, welcome to another video of Piltone AWS series. Now first let me thank you guys for subscribing to my channel because a couple days back I reached 1000 subscribers and it really is a great motivation for me to do more videos on this particular subject. Well, so far I have done uh, several videos on different AWS services. For example, AWS Lex, you know how to build a cloud directory with S3, AWS Mobile Hub, you know, sign in, sign up with Cognito, hosting web application, etc. Now, in some of these videos, I went really deep dive into these services. So I believe now you guys have a really good understanding about some of these AWS services. Now, today I want to do something different. I want to create a project from scratch, like uh, from requirement gathering stage to building and real world application from scratch using different AWS services. So let's create a model project so that you guys also can use these techniques to build your own projects as well. Right. Now let's go into our slides. So the model project that I'm going to create is to build an e-commerce website. Now in this e-commerce website, I got these functional requirements. One of these says users can browse the products without having to log in. And users can search for a particular product of interest. And also users need to log into the application in order to purchase the product. And logging should support multiple social logins as well. And admins can create, add, or edit existing products. Now, all these are functional requirements. Now, we should not just jump right into AWS and pick services and build up the application. First, we need to get our architecture right. So AWS has released a white paper about five pillars of well-architected applications. Now, they have mentioned security, reliability, performance efficiency, cost optimization, and operational excellence are these five pillars. Now, if you consider these pillars, they are like the basement of a building, right? Suppose that you are you're building a particular building. If the basement is not properly laid out, all the things that you build on top of the building will be shaky. So we need to get these main pillars right in our architecture so that we don't have to go on firefighting in future about your architectural decisions, right? So that's what these five pillars are meant for. So let's take one by one. The first it says the security. So when you talk about security, it's about the uh, ability to protect the information of your application. Now suppose this is an e-commerce web application, so you have different product information or maybe customer information. So your application should be secure enough to protect those information. This particular pillar is in, it's about like implementing a strong identity foundation, like how are we going to manage user identities and also uh, applying security on different layers because you have this front end uh, that is maybe hosted on S3 bucket and maybe if you decided to go for API, there's a you have to apply security on API gateway level and if you decided to go for a persistent layers like database, elastic search, caching layer, so you have to have security implemented at all these layers. So that's about the first pillar, security. Now the next pillar is reliability. So it's about your system's ability to recover from different uh, disturbances. Like for example, infrastructure or service disruptions, can your application be recovered from them? For example, let's say that you decided to host this in cloud and you host it in a single availability zone or single data center let's say if that data center got any natural disaster and it is completely out of service how can your application be up and running so can your application be recovered from that particular disastrous situation so that is about the reliability so this basically involves about how your application automatically recover from failures and also how your application uh, scale horizontally Maybe not vertically, because uh, if you host it in a server and if you add more resources onto that server and you can uh, scale it vertically, but if the server is down, your application will also be down. So rather than vertical scalability, we should like focus on 
horizontal scalability. Those things are involved in the reliability pillar. And the other pillar is the performance efficiency. So it's about how efficiently your application meet the functional requirements of your users. Right? So how fast you can go global and how can you like select the high performance architecture for your application? Are you using a serverless architecture or uh, a serverless and a server architecture, like hybrid architecture? So those things are considered at this pillar. And third pillar is about cost optimization. Well, this is a really important area because this is about how to avoid all those unwanted costs, right? So this is about how you use different uh, services like managed services instead of spinning up EC2 servers in AWS and uh, instead of like committing up front, how can you use pay-as-you-go model maybe and uh, how can you analyze your expenditure and tweak your architecture accordingly. So those things comes into the consideration in this particular pillar. And also we have operational excellence. So that is basically about uh, running your application in order to deliver business value. For example, let's take this uh, e-commerce website. So the customer who wanted an e-commerce website has some business needs, right? And these needs may vary with time. And also in the perspective of AWS, they are also innovating rapidly. So for example, if you guys have seen any reInvent videos, they are like uh, giving out a lot of new innovations maybe new services and advancement of existing services. So is your application able to adopt this new improvement? So can one of the component uh, be totally removed and replaced with a new technology, which is really high performance and cost effective? Is your application supporting these things in order to provide more business value for your customers? So this is considered at this particular pillar, operational excellence. So even before implementing your functional requirements, make sure to go through these five pillars and make sure the basement is stable. All right, now that we know about the five pillars of well-architected application, let me explain the AWS services that I'm going to use in this e-commerce website with respect to these five pillars. All right, for the front end, of course we can use any front end framework. So in this case, I'm going to use Angular framework. You guys can choose Angular, React, Vue.js, or any other front-end framework. And it's always good to go ahead with the front-end framework since most of the heavy lifting of modern applications are done by the front-end framework. So it's always less work rather than writing it in plain vanilla JavaScript. So choice of framework is Angular framework. And then I'm going to use AWS Amplify front-end library. So why did I use Amplify library? It's nothing but because of the simplicity and the security. AWS Amplify library allows us to make sign requests to our backend AWS services. These requests are signed by identity and access management roles so that users can securely communicate with the backend services. So let's go to the front end deployment. So where am I going to put the website? or host the website. So I chose S3. So the main reason why I chose S3 is the reliability. So S3 has 11.9 durability. So if you put an object to S3, it will make sure it is highly reliable. It is never going to be lost. So our app web application will be highly reliable as well as S3 is very cost effective. And also when we configure S3 to host and web, web application, it will automatically be scalable. We don't have to do anything. So no matter 1000 requests, 1 million requests, S3 will serve all those requests without we having to do anything. So it's highly scalable. So that's why we chose S3. And we are going to add CloudFront in front of S3 bucket. The main reason we use CloudFront is as a CDN or content delivery network. So it's again the performance efficiency. So because with CloudFront added on top of our S3 bucket, it will serve the content 
with the cache. So it doesn't have to go back to the S3 bucket to fetch the content of the website, but instead it will serve from the CrowdFront level. So it will serve from the cache. So the web application will load very fast. Not only that, but also we can acquire a certificate from ACM or Amazon Certificate Manager and apply it onto the CloudFront service. So with that, it will enable SSL. So all the connection to the website will be encrypted. So encryption in transit will be achieved. So we don't have to worry about man in the middle attack. So in addition to that, we can add WEF web application firewall on top of CloudFront. So WEF will provide security against top or common web attacks like SQL injection, cross-site scripting, etc. So that's another security feature. And finally, we'll be using Route 53, another managed service or the managed DNS service from AWS. So you guys can see the choice of these services is always depending upon the five pillars. Now let's go into backend. So in the backend, we'll be using serverless architecture. So we will use Lambda to run our business logic. The main reason why we use Lambda is to have cost optimization because lambdas are being built only for execution time and also lambdas are quite reliable so if one lambda fails AWS will make sure it will spin up another lambda and make sure all the requests are being served and as for our API we are going to use API Gateway now API Gateway is a managed service API Gateway scales by itself. We don't have to do anything. API Gateway will make sure it will handle any number of requests. So the reliability aspects is really high. No matter how many requests it will get, will be directed to lambdas. So it's quite reliable. And for our database, we are going to use DynamoDB. Now DynamoDB is another managed service. So it will replicate your data in different availability zones. So we don't have to worry about the reliability of the data. If there's a natural disaster at one data center, the data will be available in a different data center. So the availability wise or the reliability wise DynamoDB is really good. And not only that, but also DynamoDB has very high security aspects as well. Now we don't want our DynamoDB or the database to be accessed over internet. So DynamoDB has the support to be run inside a private network. So all the database connection will be routed via a private network, but not over internet. So with that, it will be quite secure. So that's our backend services. So how about search? For the most parts, e-commerce web application should be able to do free text searching. So if a user can remember part of a product name, he can start typing into the elastic search or in the front end, and then he will be even with a lot of suggestions. So those things can be achieved with elastic search service. Again, this is a managed service and elastic search service is ideal for ser searching. So this is fold into operational excellence pillar. And not only that, Elastic search can also be run inside a private network. So we can establish really high security around this elastic search service as well. And we are also going to use AWS Lambda, the managed service to asynchronously index document into this elastic search. So the part where the lambdas add the data into the elastic search is very decoupled. So if there's a new service that AWS will launch in future, instead of Elasticsearch, we can easily replace that with this decoupled architecture. So we'll get into more information when we are doing the architecture di uh, diagram. And let's move on to authentication and authorization. So for authentication and authorization, we are going to use Amazon Cognito. Now this Cognito service will decouple our users from our application. So our users are no longer be coupled with the application 
and they will be served in a highly scalable user pool. And also for the first 50,000 users are free, so it's cost effective to start and it supports variety of security standards. We can use Cognito Identity Pool in order to incorporate identity and access management with our users. So when a user logged into the application, we have a private context of that particular user's access. So we can define fine grain access control for a particular user. And also Cognito supports standard authorization protocols like O2, OpenID Connect, SAML, etc. So when we are adding the user sign in with different social logins, because if you can remember that was another functional requirement, we can easily use Cognito to link with all those web identities. Now let's get into the security consideration of our application or the security requirement. So it says O2 must be user authorization protocol. Of course, that will be supported with Cognito and website must be served over HTTPS. Since we are adding certificates at the cloud front level, the website will be served over HTTPS. API Gateway private endpoint must be protected with IAM. So basically, when a user is logged in over Cognito, he will be assigned a private user context. So with that, he can securely connect with these protected endpoints. So this part also, we cracked it. And database must not be over internet. And also elastic search must not be over internet. So both of these concerns can be easily addressed with the support of VPC of DynamoDB and elastic search. So with DynamoDB and elastic search, we are going to run inside our VPC or virtual private cloud or our private network. So connecting to those DynamoDB and the elastic search will happen only over the private network, but not over the public internet. So I believe we have covered all the security consideration that was required. And up next, is the architecture diagram. So now that we know about all the services we are going to use, we will draw our architecture diagram in the next video. Thank you guys and I'll see you then.